Here's a challenge. Show that atoms exist. Early Greek philosophers proposed that everything is made of microscopic atoms constantly jiggling about in the void with some sort of hooks to join together to form solids. But Aristotle claimed there are no atoms and no void. His incorrect view held sway until around 1800. Now imagine you lived during the 2000 years of no atoms. How could you have convinced people that Aristotle was wrong and atoms do exist? My answer is that people should think about crystals. Crystals are not just beautiful, they practically force you to see atoms. If Aristotle had been right and matter was continuous and infinitely divisible, there would be no explanation for how crystals form. It's amazing to think that such precise objects arise naturally. They can literally be picked up out of the dirt. For example, these cubes of pyrite look like they were produced in a machine shop. Their angles and dimensions are so exact but they're just natural crystals of iron sulfide. And this is halite, the mineral term for salt, natural cube-shaped crystals of sodium chloride. And galena, that's lead sulfide, is another mineral that naturally crystallizes as cubes. When you ask yourself, what kind of process could lead from a universe of primordial chaos to a world where we can walk around and pick up perfect cubes out of the dirt, the only naturalistic explanation that anyone has ever proposed is that crystals are arrays of tiny repeating units. The ancient Greeks must have seen salt crystals grow as a container of salt water dried up. Initially the salt can be tasted throughout the solution, but it ends up in little cubes that grow at the bottom of the container. That can only be explained if microscopic building blocks of salt attach themselves to the growing crystal in regular arrays as the water evaporates. In 1611, the astronomer and geometer Johannes Kepler was the first to point out that regularly repeated units can account for crystal structure. He wrote a book on snow crystals, suggesting how a triangular packing of units of condensed water vapor explains the six-fold symmetry of snowflakes. Nowadays we know that not just ice, but many minerals have a structure that can be understood as stacked hexagonal layers. For example, measure the angles in a crystal of quartz and you'll find the 120 degree angles that this model predicts. Some minerals crystallize into this shape, called a rhombic dodecahedron, with 12 rhombic faces. It's not a cube, but the form fits naturally into a cubic lattice of units because it can be constructed from repeating building blocks if they form these slanted surfaces. That was discovered in 1784 by a French mineralogist, René Just Aouy. This rhombic dodecahedron garnet crystal is a great example. You can measure it and find 120 degree angles everywhere, which is just what the theory predicts. You can also use the same cubic lattice to form an octahedron. This shape has eight triangles, four at each vertex. The octahedron form occurs in diamonds, among other minerals. Some people like cut diamonds, which are ground down to have many reflective facets. I prefer this natural octahedron diamond crystal because when I look at it, I can visualize how its carbon atoms are arranged. To be clear, the crystal's shape tells us there's a regular cubic arrangement of microscopic units, but it doesn't tell us exactly what those units are. The outer shape is compatible with the units that could be atoms or groups of atoms. The repeating cubic unit in the diamond turns out to be several carbon atoms. The details of crystal building blocks weren't resolved until the invention of X-ray crystallography, just 100 years ago in 1912. You can buy these fluorite octahedra at many rock shops. Unlike the diamond, this is not the shape in which the crystal naturally grows. These are shaped by cleavage. Someone took a larger lump of fluorite and cracked it. It's weakest along the directions that make an octahedron. One of my favorite crystal shapes is called a pyritohedron. This shape is a pentagonal dodecahedron. It's made of 12 pentagons. There are three at each vertex, but it's not a regular dodecahedron. These are not regular pentagons. The pyritohedron occurs when the crystal grows with a two to one slope for the surface. If you walk along these steps, you go two cubes in one direction and then one over. When you choose 12 of these planes in the right way, the overall shape is this irregular dodecahedron. You can confirm the structure by measuring the angle between faces. It's about 127 degrees, just as the theory predicts. I'll end with an unusual specimen I have. This is pyrite in the form of an icosahedron. 
There are five triangles meeting each vertex, but they aren't all equilateral triangles, so this isn't a regular icosahedron. I've never seen this crystal shape in a book or mineral museum, but we can understand it in terms of the theory of atoms. Here we have the 12 planes that form the pyridohedron, and also the 8 planes that form the octahedron. Combining them gives 20 triangular facets, 5 at each vertex. It's lovely to see how it can be explained in terms of a cubic array. I'm leaving out many details, of course, about how the visible forms of crystals derive from the physics and chemistry of their arrays of atoms. Many complex things happen when surfaces form. But the first step is to have a basic understanding that there's a lattice of atoms. 2,000 years without atoms delayed modern science considerably. So the physicist Richard Feynman once said that if only one sentence of information could be passed on to future generations to help them rediscover science after some cataclysm, it should describe how everything is made of jiggling atoms. I would add a corollary that if some natural objects are to be chosen to spark people into understanding that atoms must exist, then crystals are what I would choose. Once you measure the angles of a crystal, your ability to visualize mathematical structures and propose them as models of invisible atoms leads you towards a deeper understanding of the world. Some people claim crystals have energy auras or some such nonsense powers, but crystals actually have a real and much greater power, the power to enlighten us about the existence of atoms too small to see.